Hey there, Skiggity here, aka Scott, working on a livery for the iRacing Porsche 992 that just came out in GIMP, and I wanted to share something that I have learned uh, through much trial and error with spec maps, and I think it might be useful. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials out there, a lot of them are more than an hour long. This is hopefully not going to be one of those. Um, just give you a glance here. So here's the model as we got it, the paint is done great. We want to start looking at a spec map. So we hop over to GIMP. When you open up a spec map in GIMP uh, from the PSDs that iRacing provides, this is usually what you see. And what was throwing me off for the longest time, I would dutifully do all of my work on the red channel in the metallic and the parts and everything. And then I go to the green channel and I do all the work. And after a while, I noticed nothing I was doing in the green channel was mattering. And the reason is when you export this, to your iRacing number underscore spec dot TGA uh, to build a spec map, you are essentially, in the default way that GIMP loads it, only uploading the topmost layer and the values within. Uh, for example, this Porsche badge is white, it's 100% red, it's 100% green, it's 100% blue. The way that iRacing turns that into a MIP map, it's going to turn the red is going to be the metallic value, the green is going to be the roughness value, and in this case, that means the roughness value is firewalled along with the metallic value, and that does not lead to a shiny object, that leads to a very non-shiny object, so you end up with a lot of weird stuff going on your spec maps, you might have noticed things that you were doing. I got once I realized that, I had started playing with transparencies, but it, it just never really clicked for me that all that matters, what you see in this overall thing, and as you pull up the color dropper, the amount of red, green, and blue, and really only red and green, because they don't use blue most of the time, are the issue. So the first thing you want to do is click on your channel, and here where it says Pass Through, turn that to Addition. Oh, <gasps> my goodness, all of a sudden, now... Instead of this topmost layer just blocking everything out, we can see some things. You also want to go to green. And instead of pass through, we're going to go to addition. Bang. Where did it all go? Well, blue channel is dominating everything. But we can set that to. Uh, so we don't really need to set this because this is the lowest layer. I've got this spec map alpha channel must include turned off because we don't need to include that the way GIMP is going to do this. Um, now what we need to do is turn them all their various colors. I accomplish that under colors. If you go to levels, um, you can adjust the individual levels. So channel. In this case, we're on blue channel. So the blue, you want to set that to the max and everything. I've got these preset. Basically, boom, I click this on blue. Now my blue channel is blue and the pass-through is working, so everything goes through it. Go up to my green channel. You do have to close this out on every... Oh, that didn't take. Uh, tools, colors, levels, presets, blue channel is blue. Hit OK. I'm going to go to the green channel. My same thing, and I've just sort of recreated these. Recreated these. Uh, and you have to do it for each sub-layer. You can't do it for the whole thing. So we're going to go to colors levels. This one I'm going to preset to green. And what it's doing, it's just taking the, la the layer that already exists there and assigning it only green values. I'm sure there's a more eloquent way to put that. I don't know how this software works. This is what I figured out. Uh, go back here. So we're still doing green. Boom. Okay. So now our green channel for roughness is all green stuff. And in fact, if I turn off the red channel and the blue channel, you can see Actually, well, we can see green and the other color. So that's just what our green channel looks like. Turn our red channel back on and our blue channel back on. Go to red channel. We're going to turn our base paint. Colors levels. Now we're working in red. So I've got my red levels. Boom. Go to parts, colors, levels, presets, red. Boom. Notice those turn pink instead of white. That's a big difference. So this now 
is looking pretty much like they look when they come out of the PSD if you're opening them in Photoshop, for example. So if we are to take this now and we're going to export it as our car, our number, spec. Boom. Okay. And yes, I want to export that. Where's my little telltale? Get that. There we go. Yeah, you're going to get errors occasionally. Just ignore those. Bang. So we have just applied this spec map, and now if I switch you back to the model focus, this now is the Porsche with the default spec map, but you'll notice our Porsche badge is shiny and chrome. If we had uploaded this with the default black and white, totally no bleed through, this Porsche badge would be very, very, very fuzzy. It would be metallic, but it would have a ton of rough texture and it would not be shiny at all. And that would be a flat wrong. So now that you've got this, you can start playing around. And I'm going to be doing a number of things. I've got oranges, I've got silvers, which are the white parts. When I apply metallic to those, those are going to turn fairly silver. Uh, and I've got some other fiddly bits. But just to get you started, and to keep this short enough, let's go ahead, uh, turn off our spec map for a second, come down here. Um, let's go ahead and do the oranges. Actually, let's do the silvers. They're going to be uh, they're going to be shinier. So I've got my master silvers layer. I'm going to copy that. This is just pre-selected all the silver stuff. Boom, like that. Uh, once we've got that copied, we can turn this off. We're going to come up here, and we're going to apply underneath the uh, parts usually, because the parts tend to be a little bit firmly dictated, although we may play with that. Uh, let's go ahead and actually if I just paste it should turn into a new layer. Boom. So we're going to call this Silvers. And we're going to do the same thing in our green channel. Layer. Oh, nope. That'll make a blank layer. I just want to paste it. There we go. Silvers. Name it however you like. I tend to be pretty lazy with my naming conventions. So those are our silvers. In fact, I'm going to select those out, and we want those to be. So this now has highlighted everything from just that layer. Uh, if I blank this out. Looks a lot like it did on the uh, the other thing, and in fact, it is that same sort of white color. But we don't want that. We want this to be a fully uh, we're in the red channel now, so we're going to turn this all 100% red. That hopefully... Bang. Okay. So, now our silvers are very, very silver. And on the green one, go down to that channel. 100% green. Bang. Okay. So, those are both now fully... This comes out white because they're at 100% of everything. Red, green, and blue means white. Now we can start playing around with these sliders. If I reduce the roughness, the green channel, I've taken my pure green, I can drop that down to about 8 point something, about 7.5 percent. Let's go ahead, file, make sure we're on export to car. Uh, yes, that's fine, don't care about this error. Boom, just like that. We have exported that spec map, and now, instead of those being white, we have assigned them a very, very, very metallic level, about 100%, and we've assigned them a nearly perfectly smooth level, but with a little bit of burnishing to it, and that has created this kind of neat dark silver. If I then want to bring you guys back to GIMP so you can see it happen, doot. Uh, come through here. If I wanted that, like the silvers, we can take, instead of 100% red, pure, pure metallic, let's take that down to about 94%. And now I'm going to take you back to the model at, before I do the export, and we'll see if we can have, have it happen in real time. Comes the export. You can see the change. Boom, just like that. And now, that's got a little bit of a brush to it. You can also see... Uh, the parts layer is turning the inside of that vent white. 
And also, we've got some of the decals coming through, uh, which we don't want. Honestly, I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the parts. Well, maybe not all the parts. This is going to be something I fiddle with. You're going to have a lot of moving parts on this car. This one's not an easy, quick, and simple model. But if, for example, I do turn off the parts and export the same map, that should make that white part go away inside the scoop. Bang. Sure enough, that now is a metallic silver instead of white right here. So, just like that. And all we care about when we're using GIMP is what does this top layer look like inside a GIMP. And if you're curious, you always take your color picker. So like right here, what do we got? We got this color pink happens to be 97.6% red, 33.7% green, and 100% blue, which is an unused channel. So that is how you start putting together a spec map. Once you play with those with decal layers, you assign them those colors, and you can just use the transparency sliders. It's really easy to uh, make your changes and throw stuff around. Just see what works. I hope this has been helpful for you uh, when it comes to using spec maps in GIMP. Thank you very much for watching.